Hi, and welcome to the eighth and final lesson in the Prayer to Go series on prayer. We are trying to give prayer a second chance. In our last time together, we found out that God many times can tell us, wait, with regard to our prayers. He's not saying no, he's not saying yes. He's saying wait, why? Because there is something he wants to do in the waiting process. We found six reasons why God has us wait. Again, God either says yes, no, or wait to every one of our prayers. Now, we're gonna look at the question, why might God say no to our prayers? We're going to find four reasons why God may say no to our prayers. The first is due to sin in our lives. The second is due to the fact that God has a different plan or a different will and therefore says no. The third reason is the fact that God's glory will be revealed in a greater way through something else. And the fourth is due to selfish prayers. These reasons were derived from the 11 prayers in the Bible that we found were clearly answered no. Let me list them for you very quickly. In Numbers chapter 11, Moses asks to have his life taken away. God says no. Later in Deuteronomy chapter 3, he says, God, I want to see the promised land. God says no. In 1 Samuel, King Saul asked for guidance. God did not give it to him. He got a no answer. Later, Saul asks again for help and guidance. And God says no. In 2 Samuel, David prays for his son through Bathsheba to stay alive. God says no. In 1 Kings, Elijah prayed that he might die. God said no. In Jonah, Jonah asks God to take his life. God says no. In Jeremiah, King Zedekiah prayed for help in defeating Nebuchadnezzar. God said no. In Mark 10, James and John asked to sit on the right hand of Jesus. They didn't get the answer they wanted. In Matthew 26, Jesus asked that he not have to go through the suffering if it was possible. His father says no. And finally, in 2 Corinthians, Paul asks to have a thorn removed from his flesh. And God said no. In this lesson, we're going to look at the 11 no's, see what kind of categories they fit into, and then also see what other biblical passages speak of why God may give no answers to our prayers. Out of the 11 passages where God gave no answers, the number one reason was due to sin being in their lives. Let's look at some of these examples. When Moses was bringing the people up out of Egypt and into the Promised Land, they had to go through the desert to get there. While in the desert, they complained multiple times to God and to Moses. Two times they complained about not having water. On the first complaint, God told Moses to strike a rock with a staff and water would come from it. Moses struck it and the water came out. The second time God told Moses, speak to a rock, don't strike it. And then we read these words in Numbers chapter 20, verses 11 and 12. Then Moses lifted up his hand and struck the rock twice with his rod, and water came forth abundantly, and the congregation and their beasts drank. But the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Because you have not believed me to treat me as holy in the sight of the sons of Israel, therefore you shall not bring this assembly into the land which I have given them. Moses disobeyed God. He didn't speak to the rock. He struck it. Later, as the Israelites are about to go into the promised land, Moses is reviewing his life with them. And he says these words in Deuteronomy chapter 3, verse 25. Let me, I pray, cross over and see the fair land that is beyond the Jordan, that good hill country in Lebanon. But the Lord was angry with me on your account and would not listen to me. What's happening here? Moses says, God, I've been working my whole life to go to the promised land. Can I please go? And God says, no. It was because of Moses' sin that God gave him a no answer. Saul repeatedly sought the favor of men over God. And so God twice gives him no answers. David sinned by sleeping with another man's wife. He got her pregnant. Then he murders the husband. And then once the child is born, the child becomes sick. And so David asked God to spare the child's life. God clearly said no by having the boy die. Why? Because of David's great sin. Zedekiah gets a no answer from God because of the sin of the people of Israel. Out of the 11 no answers to the Bible, 45% of them are no's because of sin. Well, how does this change your life, your prayer life? 
Should we go around inspecting every area of our lives looking for sin? No. John chapter 16, verse 8 tells us that it is the role of the Holy Spirit to convict us of sin. Let God show us where any sin may be in our lives. But at the same time, I want to say, be careful. There are some believers who are so callous to sin, they, like King Saul, think they're doing the right thing, think they're walking with God, yet are clueless to the fact that they are in sin. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 and 2 says of people in the church. Now the Holy Spirit tells us clearly that in the last time, some will turn away from the true faith. They will follow deceptive spirits and teachings that come from demons. These people are hypocrites and liars, and their consciences are dead. Their consciences are dead. The problem is they don't know their conscience is dead. They do not know they are following demons and deceptive spirits. Why? They have so much sin, they are blind to the truth. The number two reason why God may give no answers is due to the fact that God knows that He has a different plan or a different will from what we are asking. We find this in the life of Moses, Elijah, and we assume Jonah. All three asked God if they could die, but God said no. Why? God knew that they were praying for something that was outside of His will. With regard to Elijah, he wanted to die because he felt all alone and was being pursued by evil people. God is saying, I know you're tired. I know you are emotionally drained, but I still have a purpose for you. I will not answer that prayer the way you want. God knew that he had more work for Elijah to do. Elijah still had to speak to kings, anoint other kings, anoint Elisha, and be a leader for God's people. This was the same for Moses. Moses had over 40 years worth of work to do in giving the law and in leading his people. In both cases, God said, my will for you is not finished. What you are asking for goes against my will. Therefore, it will not be granted. Although we don't specifically hear this about Jonah, we assume God had more work for Jonah to do because he was a key prophet during his time. So there are times when God says no to our prayers, because he knows that what we are asking for is different from what he wants to accomplish. It is not in the center of his will. Note, what we may be asking for may not be outside of biblical guidelines. In other words, we're not praying selfish prayers, but God still says, no, I have another purpose. My will is in another direction. This takes us back to humility. We must pray humbly saying, Lord, this is what I think is best. This is how I see the best way to advance your kingdom, but I could be wrong. Show me a better way if there is one. Not my will be done, but yours. The number three reason God gives no answers is due to the fact that God's glory may be revealed in a greater way through something else. In other words, the glory that will be revealed by saying no is greater than the glory that would be revealed by answering it? Yes. We see this in the life of Jesus and Paul. Jesus said, Father, take this cup away from me. In other words, I really don't want to go through this torture and die. But God says, no. My son, by having you go through this, my glory will shine forever and it will bring about salvation to the ends of the earth. I am not going to take it away from you. In other words, the glory that would be revealed through his death and resurrection was greater than the glory that would be revealed by saving him. This is the way it was with Paul as well. There was something in Paul's life that was tormenting him. What it is, we do not know, but it must have been bad. Paul asked God clearly three times to take it away, but God says no. Why? 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 8 and 9, we read these words. Three different times I begged the Lord to take it away. Each time he said, My grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. In other words, the glory I reveal by allowing this thorn in your flesh to remain is greater than the glory that would be revealed by taking it away. There are going to be times when God says no to your prayers because he knows his glory will be revealed in a greater way. 
Keep your eyes looking for more and more glory rather than your understanding of what would be best. And then you'll be able to understand how God is answering your prayers. Well, the number four reason God may say no is due to hedonistic squandering. In other words, praying selfish prayers. We talked about this earlier in lesson one. Many people's prayers do not get answered because they are praying selfish prayers. They are praying prayers to advance their kingdom, not God's. And God simply says, no, I'm not going to answer those prayers. This is what James and John did with Jesus. They asked him if they could sit on his left and right when they got to heaven. They were quite focused on themselves. Jesus says, I'm sorry, I can't do that. I love, though, how they started out their request. They said the words, teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. You get the idea. We're not going to tell you what it is, but we want to promise you'll do it. Promise us you'll give us whatever we ask without even knowing what it is. They wanted the blank check, but for all selfish reasons. Like a child trying to outsmart a parent, they are trying to force Jesus to give them a positive answer. That simply does not work. But imagine, what if it did work? What if every time we prayed something selfish, God answered that prayer? What would that do to us? It would make us look and act like spoiled children. We would want God's presence far more than his presence. We would be seeking God for what he could give us, not for who he is. It would make us like a child who is only concerned about themselves, only concerned for their ways, only focused on what they get out of life with no concern for anyone else. What would it be like to be up in heaven with those type of people? It would be terrible. This is why God many times says, no, I don't want you to be a spoiled child. Well, four reasons why God may say no. The first is due to sin in our lives. The second is due to God having a different will. The third reason is due to the fact that His glory can be revealed in a greater way. And the fourth is because we are praying selfish prayers. Well, we said we would not only look at the examples of no answers to prayers, but also simply look at scriptures that talk about why God does not answer many of our prayers. Let's look at some of these. In Matthew chapter 21, starting in verse 21, Jesus says these words. Truly I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do whatever was done to the fig tree, but even if you say to this mountain, be taken up and cast into the sea, it will happen. And all things you ask in prayer believing, you will receive. Through prayer, you can move mountains to advance God's kingdom. The sky is the limit. Remember, God has given you a blank check. But when we write on that blank check to advance God's kingdom, God wants us to come to Him believing in faith that He will do whatever we ask of Him. Why? Because Hebrews 11:6 6 tells us that faith pleases God. And if we come to God in prayer without faith, we're not pleasing Him. And there's no guarantee He'll answer our prayers. Well, here's another passage. In Psalm 66, verse 18, we read these words. If I regard wickedness in my heart, the Lord will not hear. If we are clinging to something emotionally that is not pleasing to the Lord, forget about having your prayers answered. God's not even listening. You can't be secretly enjoying pornography on the Internet and then cry out to God in other areas. God says, no, I'm not even listening to you. In Malachi chapter 1, God says that he is displeased with the nation of Israel because they offered sacrifices that were stolen, crippled, and sick. In other words, they were offering God their leftovers or their second best. He's not hearing their prayers either. If any believer is giving God only a second best, if they are seeking God half-heartedly, acting one way on Sunday and another way the other six days of the week, they will not have their prayers answered unless it is a prayer of repentance. Look at Proverbs chapter 1, verse 28 through 30. When they cry for help, I will not answer. Though they anxiously search for me, they will not find me. For they hated knowledge and chose not to fear the Lord. They rejected my advice and paid no attention when I corrected them. 
Are you rejecting God's advice in any way, shape, or form? Do you not pay attention to Him when He is correcting you? Deep down in your heart, do you really not fear Him? Then do not expect your prayers to be answered. Look at Proverbs chapter 21, verse 13. He who shuts his ear to the cry of the poor will also cry himself and not be answered. Have you in any way shut your ears to the poor? If so, do not expect your prayers to be heard. In Jeremiah chapter 11, when Judah was crying out to God, the Lord said he would not listen because your gods are as many as your cities, O Judah. In other words, they were into idolatry. Are we into idolatry today? Do we literally bow down before false gods? No. But in our heart, can our homes, can our cars, can the sport events that consume our lives be like idols that we bow down before? Absolutely yes. If that is the case, God is not going to hear our prayers. Isaiah chapter 59 verses 2 and 3 says, But your iniquities have made a separation between you and your God, and your sins have hidden His face from you so that He does not hear. For your hands are defiled with blood, and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken falsehood, your tongue mutters wickedness. Are your hands stained with blood? I doubt it. <laughs> have you been doing anything morally evil? I doubt that too. But have you lied? Have you torn others down with your words? If yes to any of these, God says He's not going to hear your prayers until you repent. Once again, in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7, we hear these words. You husbands, in the same way, live with your wives in an understanding way as with someone weaker since she is a woman, and show her honor as a fellow heir of the grace of life so that your prayers will not be hindered. Husbands, are you living with your wife in an understanding way? Are you honoring her? If not, your prayers are being hindered. Well, let's review. We've looked at 11 prayers that were clearly answered no. We then looked at biblical principles that God gives in His Word as to why He does not hear our prayers. Of the 11 no's, 45% of them were due to sin. 28% were requests that were outside of God's will. 18% were due to God's glory shining in a greater way through something else and 9% were selfish. In the biblical text we looked at, by far the majority of them basically said, if there is sin in your life, your prayers are not even going to be heard, much less answered. God says in His Word, you shall be holy for I am holy. We cannot enter into God's presence nor expect Him to hear our prayers unless we are holy. This is the lesson God gave to Israel over and over. It's the lesson He gives to us today. If you seem to think that God is not answering a lot of your prayers, you might be in sin and not even realize it, or God may simply have different plans, or God's glory is going to shine in a greater way through something else, or you're simply praying selfish prayers. Well, we hope you are learning to give prayer a second chance. We hope your prayer life is changing as a result of this series. Our goal is to get you, as well as ourselves, focused on God and His kingdom, not only in what we pray, but in every area of our lives. As we walk with God and pray prayers for His kingdom in faith, God will hear them and act. Not always in the way we expect, but He will act. Now, I want to encourage you that if this series has had an impact in your life, Go find some people you can take through the series. Ask God to change their prayer lives. And you will be amazed at how much more you learn the second time and how much deeper you understand the material by teaching it yourselves. Well, let's end this series by once again praying the prayer to go prayers. And then you'll break down into small groups for one final time and go over the discussion questions. Thanks for being with us in the Prayer to Go series on prayer.
holiness. Lord, your word tells me that I am holy. Most of the time I don't feel it. A lot of the time I don't act it. But if you see it that way, it must be that way. In 1 Peter 1, 15 and 16, you say, Be holy in all your behavior because it is written, You shall be holy for I am holy. Cause me to live a holy life in every thought, in every attitude, in every area of my life. And help me to realize that even though I don't feel holy, I am holy. Sin. When I sin, O oh Lord, help me to see that I am primarily sinning against you. It is you that I have offended. It is your law that I have broken. It is your infinite glory that I have rejected. How dare I do that? When I come to you for forgiveness, help me to confess it deeply and freely receive your forgiveness. Sin. Holy Spirit, convict me quickly when I sin and cause me to repent just as fast. My old nature can't run my life in any way, shape, or form, nor would I ever want it to. Don't let more than a minute or two go by before I give you back lordship of my life. God's will. Lord, you command me to give thanks in everything. That means even when you say no to my prayers. When I am praying, I think I know the answer and believe you should grant my request. However, being my eternal God who knows the end before the beginning, you may say no to my request sometimes because you have a better plan. Thank you for doing that. I want what you want. I want to pray like Jesus. Not my will, but your will be done. God's grace. Father, I have prayed again and again about this pain in my life, and I hear you saying, My child, no, I will not remove your pain in this area. However, I will give you the grace to bear it. Keep your eyes on me, because my glory will be revealed in a better way than if I remove your pain. Father, I know I may not understand what you are doing in my life, but I know you are sovereign and my life is in your hands. Let your great glory shine in my life, even if it means great pain for me. Wisdom. God, there are going to be times when I pray prayers that are biblical, that are within your will, but they aren't the best thing for me or for your kingdom. I want to yield to that possibility and continue to trust in your sovereignty, not only over the affairs of this world, but over what I think is the best thing to pray for. Give me the wisdom to know when you are saying, hang in there. Keep on praying, don't give up, versus this simply is not my will. You need to be praying 
in another direction.